joining me for episode 28 of My Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I want to build those safety railings for the stairs. I also want to fit the skirting and coving into those areas. I also want to build the false wall to separate the back landing and the bathroom. So let's get started. So this is the banister rail that I salvaged from my original doll's house and I just want to go and try this into place but as you can see it's just got a little pin at the bottom there and originally the floor had a little hole where that would sit just to hold that in place. I'm going to chop this pin off now so I can go and try it in place and make sure that it fits so that I know I can copy this one exactly but I won't be putting a pin on the new one and I haven't put a hole in the floor anyway and what I'll do is once I've fitted the stairs and the skirting and coving and everything is just secure this into place with a little bit of tacky wax and that's just in case I need to remove this and the stairs at some point in the future. Now I know I'm one usually for sort of sticking things down permanently but not when it's going to become a hindrance and if you had to get into that sort of small hallway maybe to change a bulb in one of the lights or something you might need that room so it's always worth having a think about things before gluing them down permanently if you might need to move them at some point in the future. So I'm just going to see if I can just pull that out with a pair of pliers. If not, I can just cut that off. Sounds like that's coming out. So I'll just plop through the letterbox. I have actually just broken that off, I think, so I'll just shave that off, make it flat, and then we'll go and try it in place. So I've just taken out the stairs on the first floor so there's the entrance hall there and this will sit in there so that this post here is level with the one that's there and as you can see it'll be a little bit shorter and less chunky which will look a little bit nicer I think I've got a little bit of floor just in front of the rails there I suppose it doesn't really matter. I, I would have just had to make them a little bit shorter, but I think it's going to be easier just to sort of reproduce this piece. It doesn't look too bad. And I'm just going to now put the stairs carefully back in. Like that. And I'm leaving that gap along there purposefully because I'm going to be putting um, some skirting up there which will tuck just behind the stairs and we'll try and get all that done today and a lady did actually tell me what that was called was it was it called a stringer or something I can't remember I'll look it up anyway but there is actually a name for that board that runs along the side of the stairs so that's what I'll be doing there I had thought about maybe putting the panel in back in but I don't really think that will suit this style of room so I think I'll just stick with that sort of skirting board going up along the stairs there and again just in the normal cream, pale cream colour just to create a bit of a border there. Now anyway, when I, when I put these stairs back in I can't remember in the original that the that banister rail stuck out that far. I sort of show you sort of from the front angle. So I've just been back and had a look at some of the photographs from the original doll's house and it actually did and I think just probably because it's painted dark here it, it just looks as though it's a bit more prominent than it was before. But yeah, quite like that. And I, I was just thinking that I had to make two of these but actually I'm only going to have to make the one to go here on the first floor because up here we're going to be building that false wall and you're not going to see it anyway and even when I leave the door open, which is my intention, which I spoke about in the last episode, because I want to have that sort of little step ladder stand in there, maybe we'll have a little um, lamp table with a LED lamp on that I can put on just for when I'm sort of showing the house. But even when that door's open, you're not going to be able to sort of get in and, and peer into that angle. So I don't think I need one there. What about looking up the stairs? Would you need to see it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> that looks good from there, doesn't it? I really want to get one of those little cameras and when the house is done a little bit more, to sort of do like a little pretend walk round. I think that would be quite good fun. I always like peering through doors as well. 
Okay, so I'll just be making the one of those then, recreating it exactly the same size as that one, but obviously using my new rails. I think that'd look quite nice. Okay, so let's go and get on with that. Nice sunny day today in the craft room. Might have to put that blind down though, but we'll see how we how we get on. Okay, so I've got my three newel posts here and 13 spindles. The rail is made up of eight along there and five along the shorter edge there. I've also cut to size some of the banister rail and this was left over from the rail that I used for the stairs so it's already had the wood die applied and I've just cut those to the exact same size of the rails along there and there. And then if I just tuck one of the spindles into the rail like that and hold that up. These spindles are slightly longer than the old ones. I don't know if you can see that on camera there because of the colours but that comes down a lot lower than that um, post at the bottom there because I was going to use 5x5 five five, but instead I'm going to use 6x3 and I'm doing that really just because I didn't want to have to trim anything off of the bottom of all of those spindles so it's really to make my life a little bit easier and that will sit along there like that so that's actually quite a nice fit so although my spindles are a little bit narrower than the ones that were previously used I'm going to use these as my markers for where I want to attach the new spindles so if I just tuck that into place in there. Turn that onto its side like that. I just want to do a little pencil mark in the centre of each of those spindles. So I'm just judging the centre by eye, but this will give me the spacing for my new spindles. And I'm just doing a little dot and this dot will be covered with the base of the spindle. So just like that and I'm going to do the same with the shorter rail as well. Okay so now I can start gluing the new one together. So I'm going to start by attaching the spindles to these strips and I've sanded the actual spindle and I've got my sandpaper here so that I can sand off the bottom just to make sure I've got a nice flat bottom and I'm just going to glue that into place directly over that little mark that I've made if we could work as quickly as that. Think how much we'd get done. <laughs> okay so they're all glued into place and I haven't removed the excess glue from around the bottom yet. I just want to leave that to dry off for a bit just because again I don't want to be knocking them out of place before the glue has dried. So I just let them go a bit tacky and then I'll remove the glue. So I now want to start gluing all of the parts together and I want to do it with these spindles actually standing up rather than laying them down and that's just so that I can get the banister rail into the right position. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the end of that bottom rail there and then bring in my newel post and I'm positioning that so it's in the centre of the newel post there. that down, making sure it's flat against the work surface. Actually let me grab a piece of strip so I can just push that into place. 
I just want to use it to hold that down and then I can get a better grip on there. Need to go over a little bit actually. Okay, so I've got the same amount sort of overhanging at either side of that strip now. It's only a tiny amount, but at least it's equal. Push from that side as well, make sure it's upright. And then I want to do again what I did with the banisters and just put a little bit of glue at the top of each spindle. And you only need to dot it on the top because that will sort of push down and spread around the outside edge of the spindles. And I'm going to put a bit on the end of the rail. I'm just sort of feeling that those spindles are slotting into place. Okay, so feels as though they're all inside the rail, which they are. But I can even see by eye that some of the spindles aren't completely upright anymore. So let me try and just really gently manipulate them upright. Now I'm right near the camera um, microphone, so <laughs> sorry if my voice has gone super loud all of a sudden. So I want to get that rail as well so that it's sitting in the middle of that part of the newel post. It actually doesn't look too bad. That looks quite, quite straight, looking through there. Okay, so the next thing to do is do the same thing with this one. And I actually want to put the rail at that side and then we'll join them together with that remaining rail. So again, I'll just apply glue. I'm going to turn it around so I can work from sort of left to right. I feel more comfortable doing it that way. Oops. Just give that a press with that strip as well. Doesn't feel like it's gluing very well at the moment. satisfying click with that last one. That one just needs to go upright a little bit. Okay, just get that rail so it's sitting in the centre of that part of the newel post without being at an angle either. Okay, so let's done that piece there. And I'm going to attach the remaining spindle to this this one first. Let me just check that it lines up. Yeah, that's quite a nice fit there. So let's glue that into place. I think as well I'm going to really carefully glue on my thumb, turn that on its side like that so I can really get in and give it a good push down. And then we can glue these two together, like that. So again, let me just lay that one down, apply glue to this one.
put in the bottom in place first and that top rail. So I just used the lines on my cutting mat there to line that up as well to make sure it's at the right angle. I'm going to give it another press. It still feels rather fragile at this stage until the glue begins to, to take. Quite like that. So I think the best thing to do is probably leave that to dry now rather than keep playing around with it as I'll probably just end up pulling it apart again. But yeah, really like that. Looking forward to trying that in place in a moment. So that's not completely dry yet, but I couldn't resist trying it in place. And I think that looks really nice. I'm really pleased with that. And if I put these other stairs back in as well, I'll show you how it looks with those in place. Looks good. I'm rather pleased with that. So the next thing to do will be to get those um, stair sides built and then we can cut the skirting and the coving. So I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to do this stringer alongside the stairs. So if I were just to use the skirting board, obviously that's not going to be high enough because there would be gapping. And if I go further up with the stairs, then obviously I'm just covering, covering it up. So I'm going to use 2.5 millimeter sheet, which is the same thickness as my skirting. So I'll cut a piece like that and it will be flush with that sort of underside of the stairs there. So I've got that nice flush line along there. And you want to do that, otherwise your stairs won't be sitting flush against your wall. Along the front here, it will be cut, if I just use, oh, let me use that actually. So it goes up straight with that first stair there. And then, if I just use that as sort of a marker for where I'll cut it, and I'll have to get an exact measurement for this, but I'll cut it along underneath that piece of skirting there. And then so that I've got that nice moulding so that it all looks uniform, I'm going to cut this top part off the skirting. So you can see you've got a flat bit at the bottom and then you've got that lovely design. So I'll cut this flat bit off and then I can use that top part at the top of the stringer. So I'll start by trimming off this skirting and I've got plenty of the skirting but what I did just realise and I'm a little bit annoyed about because I have just placed an order with Streets Ahead, I haven't got much um, coving left so I've got three full pieces and then just a couple of scrap pieces there so I won't be able to do the whole of the coving for all of the areas in this episode but I will order some more of this in for the next episode. But, but we'll crack on and get as much done as we can because I'm actually really looking forward to finishing the entrance hall and landings. And then the other thing I just wanted to say, actually let me take you back out to the doll's house and I'll tell you in there. So I'm just using my um, handheld light here, so sorry if it's a little bit shadowy. But what I actually wanted to tell you is that I want to build in that cupboard that I spoke of before underneath that stairs otherwise I just feel that that area under there is a bit of a waste you know I suppose you could put some furniture under there but when you're sort of looking in it's easy now because there's no doors on the dining room here but when you're just sort of looking into the house it would be difficult to see under there and see any of the details so what I think I'm going to do is build that sort of under stairs cupboard in and I'm going to have the door so that it opens out this way and then I've just got an idea of having some shelves in there with some cleaning bits on and maybe that vacuum cleaner that I made as well one of the metal miniatures we could have that stood in there and then I could get a little LED light to hang in there just to switch on for when we open the door for sort of display purposes. So I think that will be a lot of fun to do. So what I'll do is I'll 
do the stringer for both sets of stairs and then I'll do make a start on this top area and I'm going to do the coving and skirting on the back wall and then on this right hand wall because when you're looking through the little door in the false wall that I'm going to try and make today that's the only bits you'll see so we'll do that and then I'll also do the coving and skirting in here and really then need to have a think about that window but it might not all be in in today's episode but I will see what I can get done right so let's make a start on trimming the mouldings from those um, skirting boards so that's actually really easy to cut really nice wood to cut through I'm not sure if that's some sort of basswood, maybe. Anyway, so that's the first one cut. And then you're left with a really nice piece of strip wood. So none of it's going to go to waste. And when you're doing it, you want to use a piece of sheet wood to balance your rule on. So have it on there like that. And then you want to hold nice and firmly onto your rule. Make sure you've got a nice sharp blade in your knife. And I've just changed this blade yesterday actually. And then make the cut, but not to cut through at this stage. You're just making a, a score. Make sure you're sticking to that line along the sort of pattern of your moulding because obviously they're not all going to be the same as this one. So I'm just sort of making a cut line really. I have gone over a cut in a couple of places but it's so small it's not going to be noticeable. And then push it along and continue. I think I'm out of shot there aren't I? It's the trouble when you're working with these really long pieces. And these are 450 millimetres long. I think that's about the sort of average length for skirting and coving. And then you can go along that line and make your cut. Do be careful of your fingers again. Don't, you know, don't need to go too quickly. Just take your time with it. And it doesn't matter even if you cut through this time. Just go a little bit deeper into that line. Do use your rule again if you feel more comfortable doing that. So just really carefully follow that line along and the... Um, battery light has just started flashing as well. I'm really not organised today. Let me change the battery and then I'll cut through that final time. I think I just need to go through one more time. <laughs> yeah, that's right there. Yeah, just a few areas where it's still joined. There. And then I've got another nice piece of strip wood there. So I'll get rid of those. Put those in the tube. And then let's bring the stairs back in. Okay, so I've done it this time that that's where the top skirting board will sit along the top of that stair. And because we've got that lip here on the back of the stair, that, may, that will make it a little bit higher than the actual floor up there, but by that 0.8mm, which is why I use such a thin piece of wood to make the lip in the first place. So the tiny sort of gap that will be under the skirting board won't be noticeable or will be able to fill. Move those up because I can't get it straight along there. So that will sit there. So I've then placed the sheet wood so that it's just below this other bit of um, skirting moulding so that when that comes up there like that I can trim the wood and the moulding off at that angle 
to then join onto this piece of skirting. And I hope I'm explaining that okay. I'm confusing myself, I think, but once I've sort of cut it, you'll, you, you'll be able to see what I mean. So because I don't know if I've got this sheet laid exactly the same all the way down, I'm just going to make a pencil mark up the top here, just below the stairs at the back. And then that's the amount I'll need to cut from this piece of 2.5 sheet wood all the way down. So let's do that now. Okay, so I just measure where my pencil line is from the top of the piece of wood. And that is 22 millimetres. And I do that at the other end of the wood as well. And then join those up. And best to do it that way actually not join them up, I just cut the wood. It's best to do it that way than do a pencil mark at each end because like I say you don't know if you've got the bit of wood positioned correctly at the other end of the stairs, not the bottom of the stairs. Get that exactly on that line. Get a nice light cut to start with. and it will be the same for both sets of stairs so I'm going to cut the other piece that I need now as well and I chipped a bit off that corner so I'm going to turn it around and use the nice straight edge of the wood so again the 22 millimeters and I'm really looking forward to building that cupboard I think it'll be fairly easy to build she says. <laughs> but yeah, well, it'll be easy to build and we can put some nice panels and things on there. You know, if your sort of doll's house is slightly differently set out, it might be that you've got a hallway maybe with switchback stairs that run across the piece and then you've got a nice little understair area to do a display. But when they're running sort of from the front to back of the house like that it's very difficult to see under there anyway but let me know what you've done with yours let me know how you've got around that problem okay let's try these into place now okay so i've laid the sheet wood along there so i've got a nice flush bottom edge on the underside of the stairs and then overlapped it so you can see what i mean about this, this bit here is a little bit higher, but these, the little sort of rounded moulding that sticks out is in exactly the right place. So when I trim that off, I'll trim straight along that top bit there and any sort of fill in, we can use a little bit of filler before we put the paint on. It's always difficult getting angles exact. I think it's a real skill to sort of cut angles in wood and have them exact. So don't worry if you've got any little gaps, which I'm sure I'm going to have there. But I think that's going to work. And then I just had a little bit of a panic thinking about the bottom. Not a panic, but you know what I mean. That will be cut off straight up level with that bottom stair like that. So I'll have that nice straight edge there. And then the door surround to the kitchen, <laughs> again, trying to get it at the right angle. Just imagine this is the side of the door surround. It's only going to be about that far away. So what I'll then do is, again, put a piece of this strip going across straight, and then we'll just make a higher skirted board just in that tiny little area. And you won't notice that that's any higher than the rest of the room around the bottom. But you'll, you'll know what I mean as we start sort of putting it all together. But I, I really like that, how that looks going up the stairs there. I think that's about the right height. So I'll get the moulded part cut now. And then I can get the moulding stuck to the wood to create one piece. And then we can get them painted. So I've glued moulded piece to the stringer section 
and I've just dotted some masking tape along just to hold those together whilst the glue is drying. I've also cut the skirting and coving for that top landing back area, so just sort of along the back wall and along that right hand wall. The only two walls which will be visible once the false wall is in place. And then I'm now building a stud wall here, which I'll glue into place once that back landing is complete. And then I can attach the sheet wood to this to actually make the wall. So to do this, I just measured the height and width of the room and cut the sides and the top piece. And then I measured where I want my door to be. And then I've just sort of filled it out to strengthen it with some smaller pieces of strip. So I'm going to glue that all together now and then go and try that in place. So the frame for the stud wall is in place and that's a really lovely fit. And the bottom is wedged up against the edge of that wooden flooring strip there. So I knew that that was in the right place. So I measured along here and then made that same measurement along the top at each side. And I've actually drawn a line on this side around the frame so that when I take this out, finish off that back landing, I then know where this will sit. So I'm quite pleased with that. It does leave me with quite a small bathroom area and I've got a um, little bath that I've just been sort of put in into different places in there. Let me go and get that actually. So this is just a relatively inexpensive bath. It's not the one I'm going to be using in here, but I'm actually using this at the moment for a Patreon tutorial where I'm showing my patrons how to build a sort of surround for a inexpensive bath. But I do want to get a roll top bath with the claw feet. I've always fancied one of those in real life, so I'd like to have one in the in the doll's house. So it's just a question of where the bath will go. So I'm going to have to have a bath, a toilet and a sink in there and probably I'll build a little sink unit as well rather than just having a, a sink on a pedal stool. Although I say that but I might have to do it that way because I might not have room. So the options for the bath are along that wall there but then I think that's might be a little bit close to the door. The door will be hinged on this side and opening out like that. See what I'm doing there? <laughs> but so we'll open out into the room and, and back on to that wall, so to speak, so that we can then see that area of that top landing. So that's option one, shall we say. And then option two is placed along the, what we'd call the fourth wall, so the wall that's supposed to be here. And there's a window here. Just actually trying to have a look at the front of the doll's house there. Yeah, so there's going to be a window there. So that might be quite nice having the bath just below the window. Or I could perhaps have it down that wall, which is originally where I wanted it to go. And I think actually that might even work now I've already made the door slightly narrower. So the other doors in the doll's house are 80 wide. So if I just got that light straight in your eyes. So these openings are 80 millimetres wide. And I've done this 75 millimetres wide just because I was thinking about giving myself a bit more room in the bathroom. But thinking about it, I could just put another 5 mil strip along there and make the door 70 millimetres wide. And then that would just overlap the edge of that bath there. If, of course, the actual roll top bath that I get is the same width as this, which it, it should be about that wide. Sorry, this is probably really boring for you because I'm just sort of thinking aloud. Having said that, where would the sink then go? So I think probably the best option would be to have the bath here and then have a nice little sink unit here which would be as deep as that part of the wall and then we'll have the toilet over there and I'll probably get a nice low modern toilet and we could have a nice picture on the wall 
we could have the toilet roll holder over here and then I'd have this um, sink unit there, a nice mirror or a little wall cabinet and I quite like it actually when you come to look into a doll's house and you actually have to sort of turn your head to look around things you know, I don't mind that. I don't mind there being things along this fourth wall because there would be, wouldn't there? In your own home, you have things stood along all the walls. You wouldn't just have a, a bare wall. So I think we're looking at having the bath there. The other option, of course, was just having a shower cubicle. But I am actually a huge fan of baths in real life. I couldn't do without my long baths. And that's kind of how I'm thinking for the doll's house as well. They do sort of reflect our own personalities, don't they? So I think I would like to have a bath in there. So that's, we're jumping ahead a little bit because I just wanted to get this wall in so that I can finish off the, the landings and hallways. But that's, that's something to think about as well. If you're sort of blocking off a room like that, are you leaving yourself enough room for what you want to do to do with it? But I am sort of really pleased with that because that, now that's sort of dividing it off, I can really sort of see how I've been picturing it. I love the idea of just peeping through that door at the back there. I'm going to do a little, maybe a little lamp table for that section there, or a little console table or something, and we'll do a lovely little display on it. And then that will just be hidden back there and only visible once we open that little door. Okay, sorry for waffling on a bit there. So I've just given those pieces a coat of paint and I'll now leave that to dry. So these pieces are now dry and I've given them a gentle sand using a 500 grade sandpaper. And I'm now going to fit the skirting and the coving into that little back landing area. So the skirting and coving is now in place and that is going to need a bit of filling so I'll wait until that's completely dry and then I can use the filler and then do the second coat of paint. And while I've sort of had my head stuck in there, I've also noticed that I haven't done the filling in the bedroom. So again, the skirting and coving are going to need a little bit of filler work, especially on areas like around the hearth there. There's quite a bit of a gap at the bottom of the skirting. So lots of little areas like that that I'll need to fill. And then I can give that a second coat of paint as well. So whilst the coving and skirting is drying into place, I want to actually fit the panel into the stud wall. Now I'm only going to fit it to the side that is visible. So that will be this side of the frame. But obviously if you're dividing a room where both sides of your frame is going to be visible, then you'd want to fit it to both sides. But as it is, only one side of mine is visible and this will make it sturdy enough with just the one sheet. Now I'm going to turn that the other way around. And I actually didn't plan this, but these two sheets fit exactly width wise. So I'm going to lay that on there and then I'm just going to draw around to mark out where I need to cut the sheets. So I want to get it flush at the bottom with the bottom of the sheets. And it should be completely square. Because I'm pretty sure the doll's house is square. Like that. So hold it firmly in place and then just take a nice sharp pencil and make those pencil marks. To go along there and then cut out the section for the door. Like that. So I'll start by cutting along the top there and I'm just going to cut just underneath the pencil line and then that should give me an exact measurement. And that's just to allow for the thickness of the um, pencil nib. Like that, and I'll do that on both sheets first. Get the easy bit out of the way. And I'm cutting out the section for the door, but you don't have to. You could do, 
you know, your two strips going up like that to cover the sides and then you could just put an extra piece of wood in there if, if that's easier for you. And then I just want to start by making just a little nick in the corner of the part that I want to cut away. And that then helps keep your blade on track so that when you're cutting you don't go over. But because all of this is going to be covered with lining paper or tiles or, or whatever you're going to be covering your walls with, any sort of little mistakes are going to be hidden. So it's not as important as when we're sort of cutting out a section for a, a sink unit or something that is actually going to be visible. So if you do go over the lines a little bit, don't worry too much about it. So I've just got that little cut out in the corner section there. And that hasn't gone all the way through the wood, but as long as it's deep enough on the side that you're cutting on, that's fine. And then whenever you're cutting a section from a piece of wood, always cut against the grain first. And that will prevent the wood from splitting. And where you can see that dark area in the wood, that's a knot in the wood. So you'll always find that it's a little bit more difficult to cut through. But you just need to keep working your the blade of your knife through it and you will get through. Like that. And then you can turn and cut in the direction of the grain, which is always so much easier. sun coming through. Okay so there are my cut pieces and I'll just lay those together and then put my frame on top. I just want to check at this stage that it's a nice fit. So I've got a little bit of overhang on the inside of the door there but what, what I'm actually going to do is glue the frame onto the boards and then I can trim that away once it's completely dry and I need a nice straight edge in there for when I actually build the door so we'll need to stick the surround to a nice flat surface and then make the door. So. At this stage, really have a think about if you're sticking the boards onto the right side, if you are only doing them on one side of your frame. So my frame actually sits that way round in my doll's house. So face down, I know, is the right way around. And I'm actually going to apply the glue to the frame and then stick it down onto the boards. glue on there now. So I'm just making sure it's flush along those edges. Put a good firm press down. Press along all your little sort of sections. going to pop some clamps around this now and then leave it to dry. So I'll now leave that to dry and then we can go and try that in place. And there is the false wall in place. So I trimmed along each edge of the door as we spoke of so I've now got a nice flush surface there when I attach my door frame and then I just had to do a little bit of sanding along the top edge and the bottom edges there just to get that to glide in more smoothly. 
but that's a really nice fit now and I'm really pleased with how that's looking. So I'm obviously not going to attach it yet because I need to finish the back hallway and build the door into the guest bedroom. So I'm going to leave it here for today. I haven't got as much done as I wanted to but I'm aware that I haven't uploaded a video for a while and I really want to get one on so we'll leave it there for today. Managed to get a few other little bits done and at the moment I'm working on the double bed for the guest bedroom which will have that lovely silk padded headboard so that will be the next tutorial coming up and I'll not leave it as long this time and then in the next video we'll carry on in the hallways and I want to get that um, cupboard built for under the stairs in the entrance hall there so we'll get that all done as well and get all the skirting and coving and those stringers fitted and then my next thoughts really are getting those final three rooms in the main house at least decorated so this main bedroom here and then we've got the what will be the living room and then down here at the bottom the dining room so I'm going to do a bit of research and come up with some ideas for those I've got an idea for the living room I'm going to do another sofa to go in there same as the one I made for the study I want lots of sort of creams and beige and I'm going to do a log burner and we'll have some tartan fabrics and things like that in there make it a lovely sort of cosy living room and then the other two rooms I'm not really sure I'd like to have a sort of maybe a red bedroom not bright red but sort of like a burgundy or a claret with cream and I've seen some lovely um, patchwork quilts that people are making on Instagram and I'd love to have a go at making one of those so maybe we'll do a patchwork quilt for in there but we'll have a think I'll do some research and find some really nice images and there's just so much to do and I want to do it all at once I've had some ideas for the um, sort of bits and pieces to add to the unit in the study there so I want to get started on those. I've got the kitchen to finish, I've got some more food packets to make. I want to dress this little cabinet in the corner and they will all be separate videos here on YouTube so there is so much to do. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. Now if you do enjoy the tutorials and series that you find here on YouTube you might also like my Patreon page where I share a monthly vlog, a series and monthly tutorials and I'll pop the link to my Patreon page below. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.